All right, hello YouTube and welcome back. I'm leaving uh, 007 Pub, which as uh, could kind of be inferred from the name, on the inside has this whole James Bond theme going on. And, and I want to talk about that, but um, later. <laughs> maybe later. Maybe I'll get around to it. Maybe I won't. Um, you know, this, this shopping center here at 43rd and um, Union Hills, the little strip mall I was in, doesn't seem to have a substantial anchor. Um, you know, like a grocery store or a big box store or anything like that. Um, there's uh, something, something that looks sizable at the back end of the back into the strip mall and the sign is blue and red I can tell the red letters say market I cannot make out the blue letters I gotta get something done about my vision it's it's uh it's pretty fucking bad uh anyway did I save the date and time I don't think I did uh, I should probably get on that um so it is uh it is now it's late Thursday night but uh, technically Friday morning January 13th 2023, 1.46 p, uh, sorry, 1.46 a.m., 1.46 a.m., so, um, 15 minutes, <laughs> 15, actually 14 minutes, at this point, probably like 13 minutes, until it is too late for bars to legally serve alcohol. I am frantically trying to make it over to the finish line and get one more drink. Um, it's it's debatable as to whether or not I'll make it. It's debatable as to whether or not they will still be open on a Thursday night and still be willing to serve me. It's also debatable as to whether or not they're still in business. Uh, for those who have been following this vlog for uh, for for a long period of time, which I get the feeling is like probably maybe maybe two people at best, um, back when I started at I want to say shortly after I started hosting karaoke at Bollocks Cocktails, um, I would it was suggested to me that I should hit this place up as a spot to host karaoke for, and um, it's kind of been a spot that I occasionally go to as a result of that. Uh, I, I have tried to host karaoke there. It hasn't really gone anywhere, obviously. Um, and from what I understand, the, uh, the bar has been having financial problems for quite some time, and the owner of the bar has been trying to sell it with no success. So... There's a chance they're not even still in business anymore. It's been quite some time since I've gone here. Um, the, the bar I'm talking about, uh, Finish Line, or Finish Line Bar and Grill, whatever you call it. I think it's called Finish Line. I hope I'm not butchering the name. I think it's called Finish Line. Um, it's on the north northeast corner of 19th Avenue and Bell Road. And that area, the whole area surrounding 19th and Bell Road has become a, uh, a, a area which has got a heavy concentration of homeless people that are strung out on, um, strung out on fentanyl, aka blues. Uh, wow, speaking of former gigs, this, there used to be a bar off to the right here somewhere, I forget exactly where. Actually, probably, probably right there where it says Tosos. Um, in fact, it might have been called... No, it wasn't called Tosos. It was called something else. I want to say Big Daddy's. But I actually used to host karaoke there a long, long time ago. I'm pretty sure it was called Big Daddy's. So I just... Uh, back up the video, slow it down. You should be able to see the sign. It says Tosos. Um, yeah, I used to host there. And the interesting thing about that gig... That gig was a very unique gig compared to every other karaoke gig I ever had because I did not work for Big Daddy's. I worked for a, uh, oh, I, 
I'm not even sure what the hell you would call it, and I can't remember the name of the outfit, which was basically a, a like one person operation. But basically, I was working for a uh, for a um, oh man, I, I'm not sure what the hell you'd call it, but basic basically a person that books is an agent. Well, it was more than an agent, but basically a, a company that books bands and books bands for different venues and books entertainments for venues, and they handle all the all the billing and the contracting and so on and so forth, and then they pay all the entertainment contracts with them, and they pay them. And I can't remember what the hell the name of the outfit was or who did it because it was so long ago. Um, or what the hell it was called, but anyway, whoever this was, I, I, I met them because they booked shows for the sets in Tempe, where I did karaoke. Now, uh, with the sets in Tempe, I worked directly for the sets, I was hired by the sets, um, but their agent, or whatever the hell you want to call it, they booked shows for the sets. Um, really liked what I was doing with the karaoke there in the sets and told me that, you know, definitely, like, if we have a gig where we could use somebody to run karaoke, and then I told her, I was like, hey, I'm, I'm a lot more capable than that. Like, I'm a good, I'm a good sound guy. Uh, I'm a good DJ. Um, you got a cover band that needs a good vocalist. I'm a hell of a, a flexible vocalist, just like whatever. You, you see something, you think you can put me in, put me in. I'm definitely looking for, for more gigs and, and more, you know, professional type type sound and, and entertainment work. Um, anyway, the one gig that they did get me was over at um, where it's now Tosos, but it used to be called uh, Big Daddy's. And it wasn't just a straight karaoke gig. Um, which I think is a good thing. I would have felt like I was, I would have felt like I was unnecessarily paying a middleman. It was a straight karaoke gig, but um, they were doing this recreation of the Gong Show, which was so much fun. Uh, as a, as a child of the '70s, grew up watching the Gong Show, loved the Gong Show, and um, they were so they were doing this recreation of the Gong Show, and then when they added me to it, essentially when when it started, they needed a sound guy. So I was certainly a capable sound guy that could do it, but they hired me in specifically because by me doing it, I could not only be the sound guy, but that the, the recreation of the gong show usually wrapped up before 2 a.m., usually wrapped up well before 2 a.m. So by having me do it, it gave them the option of... Uh, Basically, what it did is it gave them the option of a billing for entertainment for the full night. And then whenever the recreation of the gong show would wrap up, I would uh, I would do my karaoke DJ mix thing uh, until the end of the night. So apparently this area has gotten better. The last time I was here, uh, there were all kinds of homeless people and um, people freaking out in this general area where I'm walking. And that doesn't seem to be happening now. So that's a good thing. Uh, I'm going to get my ass inside the bar. It's right around the corner here. Thanks for coming with me on this quick drive. And uh, I, I really, really hope they're open. Well, um, for a really short period of time in a bar, that was interesting. That was very interesting. Um, like, can I, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to decide. Can, can, can I drive while I do this vlog? What am I doing on this vlog? I don't know. Right now I'm thinking about that uh, Kanye West song where he goes, I was drinking earlier, now I'm driving. What song is that from? <laughs> it's one of my favorite Kanye West songs, I'm forgetting it. Ah, uh, Jesus. Yeah, that's what's up. Alright, sure my headlights are on. Wow, I turn up the radio and I get static. Republican knows that she knows that she... Yeah, somebody talking about partisan politics. I don't want to hear that. Uh, so, uh, yeah. The uh, finish line was open. It was a bartender that remembered me. That was random as fuck. Um, it was a bartender that remembered me. That was pretty cool. 
Um, I just got one like Sailor Jerry and Coke. We had a bit of a chat about Sailor Jerry. And she's like, yeah, I remember you. And you're like, probably the last person who came in here ordered Sailor Jerry. So we had a talk about Sailor Jerry and how it compares to Captain Morgan. Because at one point she was having trouble finding the Sailor Jerry bottle. And she's like, and I was like, yeah, I'll roll with Captain Morgan. It's fine. And then she's like, well, and I, I forget how the conversation went, but I was like, yeah, Sailor Jerry, um, it's a little less sweet, so the flavor to me is better with how it blends with the Coke. But the bottom line is the alcohol content is notably different. And then she looked at the bottle, and this is a bartender. This is a bartender who's been a bartender for a substantial period of time. The bartender looks at the uh, looks at the uh, looks at the bottle. I said, I said, you know, the, the biggest difference is the alcohol content. She's like, really? I'm like, yeah. And then she looks at the bottle of the Sailor Jerry's, and I don't know what the alcohol content is at the, the, the proof, whatever proof. Um, I don't know it off the top of my head. But she looks at the bottle, and clearly she had never read a Sailor Jerry rum bottle before. And she was like, oh my God, it is something something proof I don't know what proof it is I know it's real strong it's I know it's way stronger than every other rum and uh, yeah she's like she's like holy shit it's blah 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 proof I'm like yeah it's in there Jerry's what's up <laughs> and, and she never looked at that and as much as I'm a fan of Sailor Jerry over other rums you think I would that off the top of my head, like the numbers, but I don't. But what I do know is that Sander Jerry Rum is like a ridiculously way higher alcohol content than uh, every other um, every other spiced dark rum. Um, and yeah, I was drinking Spice Star Crumb tonight. Actually, I managed to get Eric Sailor Jerry at both bars, which makes me happy because Sailor Jerry is not a not an alcohol that every uh, every bar carries. So um, yeah, um, got Sailor Jerry at both bars, and I'm not. I didn't really pay attention to the price they were charging me. Um, both places, like I did on my credit card, it's like, oh, neither place has struck me as, neither place did it strike me as, holy shit, you guys are charging me too much, so, whatever. But, um, oh my god, I'm coming at 33rd Avenue. Where my sister, she should live just north of here. And her hot roommate that I had a crush on the longest time also lived with her just north of here. And hot roommate is dead. Hot roommate is dead. You know how you know when you're old? When you find out how many of your former lovers are dead. And how many of the women you used to crush on are dead. And how many of your favorite singers and movie stars are dead and you're like oh my god and then like the relatives that you kind of connected with that were older than you like you can't hang out with them anymore because they're dead and then you realize like holy shit everybody that matters is dead and uh <laughs> everybody's dead What happens after that? I don't know. After that, like, I guess I'm dead. I guess I'm dead. 
Hey, it's what it is. Everybody dies. And I had, a, I had an interesting talk with my older daughter about this. About a week ago, she was trying really hard to cheer me up. It was a weird, awkward thing. And maybe right now I should be trying to get a hold of her because she needs weird hours. And she might actually respond to me if I send a text message to her. But... It is Thunderbird. 35th Avenue and Thunderbird. I spent a large portion of my uh, early adult life living here. miserably. In fact, this stoplight right here, the intersection of 33rd and Sweetwater, or 35th Avenue and Sweetwater, is where I got a ticket for running a red light on a bicycle. When there was absolutely no traffic at all at 3 o'clock in the morning, that resulted in me not being able to have a driver's license for like a year of my adult life in my early 20s. Or, sorry, late teens. Early 20s, late teens. I don't know, somewhere there. Um, since that, I just passed the, passed the church. I just passed the church. Wow, there's bike lanes on Sweetwater now. Not that it really changes anything, because, as I've said, as a person who uh, is a big fan of um, bicycle being an option... Um, paint is not infrastructure, but anyway, Phoenix is, Phoenix has added paint. Isn't that something? All right, let's turn right and go south on 33rd. All right, well, at least they're not playing games with paint here. All right, we got a SUV with a lot of, the fuck is all on the back of that vehicle? I don't know. That's weird. I'm going to get weird. I'm going to, I don't know. I just... I probably shouldn't be driving right now, but whatever. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I could get arrested, go to jail, and I would that'd probably be a general improvement on my lifestyle. Or I could wreck the car and total it and uh, and die, and again, probably a general improvement on my lifestyle. But I'm at the corner of uh, 33rd Avenue and Sweetwater. 
Well, she was like home for me for a long time in my uh, 20s. Here we go, Thursday in Sweetwater. Brand new street sign. That's the new style Phoenix street signs. So that's pretty cool. Thirty third and Sweetwater. So there's actually two intersections of Thirty Third and Sweetwater. There's this one here, uh, right next to Soro Elementary School. Sign's not lit up. It's hard to read. Wow, it's kind of long of that. The bike lanes, and and the thing with me with the bike lanes is like it's it's paint. Paint is not infrastructure. I don't feel like that paint with the bike lane painted on the road makes this road any safer for people on a bicycle. It's just, it's just more paint. It's just more money being spent by the government on bullshit. But uh, anyway, 33rd Avenue, southbound by the school. There's the school. There's the school. This is interesting. We've got a, got a crosswalk here. I don't recall the crosswalk being here when I lived here. Oh, to me, crosswalks in the middle of a block, as opposed to being at the intersection, are stupid. But as a as a pedestrian, I do find them to be safe. I still think they're stupid. But I think the problem comes from uh, drivers who just don't acknowledge that pedestrians matter at intersections. So that's a church. I don't know what kind of church it is. Never went there. I have no connection to it. The church at the other end of the street by 35th Avenue. That used to be where I voted when I lived in this neighborhood. Actually went back there um, the first time Obama ran for president to try to vote for Obama. And I wasn't on their roster. And I was just they're like, oh, you're not on the list. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Oh, well, that sucks. And I just left because I, I knew damn well that if I was to vote at that point, it would have been a felony that I could have gone to prison for because at that point I was already a convicted felon. But if I was still on the roster, I was going to gonna, 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 uh, put my vote in for Obama. Now, in hindsight, I'm kind of disappointed with how that turned out. But uh, anyway, here's the other intersection. Uh, 33rd, 3rd Avenue in Sweetwater. Um, that's the old school Phoenix Street signs. It really bums me out that the new styles Phoenix Street signs don't look like that. So yeah, uh, 33rd Avenue northbound from Sweetwater is right here. 33rd Avenue from uh, South Africa Water is over where I was. Um, that's kind of a Phoenix thing. It's kind of a Phoenix thing where the streets will be staggered like that. I'm really close to the location where I became a convicted felon. Part of me wants to walk there, but I don't remember exactly where it was and, and what would that accomplish. But hey, as long as I'm here and I'm, I'm three Sailor, Jerry, and Cokes into, uh, into, um, into the night. <laughs> um, walk by the house, the house that was kind of mine. The house that I tried really, really hard to uh, fulfill my obligations to and purchase that was 100%. Um, I, I was taking no risks. It was all in my mother's name, you know. I probably, I probably in my failure, in my failure, to make the payments that I needed to make. I probably screwed over my mother on this. Not that I intended to do that. My intentions were to fully take care of my mother and buy her financial interest of this house out, you know, and for it to become my house. I tried so hard. Holy shit, did I try so hard. And I failed. I am, I'm 50, I'm 52 years old. I, at this point, my life is a testament to failure. It just is what it is. I mean, I've had some successes in life. I've done some pretty amazing things. I've got a 
surprisingly large amount of celebrities that have that are kind of personal friends that like I can drop names and that just makes me seem like I'm making shit up but but if those people were to see me they're like oh my god it's Dan Dan what's up um and I dropped a name at a bar tonight uh somebody had a shirt about midgets and I'm like I'm like do you know who Amanda Loy is is actually a personal friend of mine and she is Although I tried to message her on TikTok, and uh, TikTok wouldn't let me message her something about, uh, she needs to subscribe to you. I'm like, that's fair. She's kind of a celebrity now. There's the house, 3328 Sweetwater. Yeah, if I hadn't failed so miserably, not only would I have bailed my mother out of her interest in this house, but it would be mine, but it's not. Too close, I'm gonna set off their security. I don't think this is the right one. Is it? There it is. There's that. That wasn't there when I lived here. 3328. Yeah, that's my old house. I do remember how the it was originally a carport and the garage was added on. Yeah, that was done before my mother bought it and brought it with my house. That's my house for a long time. <sighs> yeah, it's there for a long time. That's where I was when I tried to start my own taxi company. Yeah, this block here. This was my life. This block. Uh, the neighbors that lived in the my, in the house right there had a baby. Had a baby. And, and all this road looks pretty unassuming. As you can see, it's got stripes on it. They've had additional stripes for the bike lane. And... And in the daytime, like it's not a busy street, but it's got traffic on it. And the people that lived in the house, their toddler, which I want to say was maybe a year old-ish, still wearing diapers, still shitting his pants, but like walking. And it ran across the street and they weren't watching it. And there, were, there was traffic on the street. And I just happened to be in my front yard and I saw it and I saw cars coming and I almost had a fucking heart attack and I don't remember what I was doing but I dropped what I was doing and I just ran across the street in front of the vehicles that were coming and scooped up the baby and ran into the drive through or into the driveway right over there and and at about that time the parents of that that toddler came out of the house came out of the house um uh, probably looking for their baby, right? And basically saw me scooped it out of the road. I'm sure prior to that point, I was the neighbor that they hated because uh, that was my house. And the space to the right of it, I kept junk cars. And I always had taxis coming and going because I was trying to build a taxi company. I thought an express cab was gonna revolutionize the taxi industry and I failed miserably at that. Holy shit, did I fail miserably at that. But in the meantime, I had broken down cars being stripped out and taxis coming and going. And then, of course, being young and I uh, love my music. And I had a concert in my backyard here once. That's, a, that's another story for another time. So I was probably the neighbor that most of my neighbors here on the street hated. And I saved the neighbor that lived in that house. I saved their child from dying at about a year old. scooped that kid up, ran across the street and just glared at the person that was driving in the street. And right about the time they came out of their house and they just looked at me. It's like, you gotta keep an eye on your babies. And they're like, oh my God, thank you. But what was funny was after that, I, they never talked to me again. Like I continued to live in that house for a year, year and a half, two years-ish. And the people in that house Never did, never did come out and talk to me again. Like, you'd think they would be a little more appreciative because I saved their toddler's life. But yeah, they never came out. And and what's this neighborhood like now? What's this neighborhood like now? God, my phone won't fucking focus. I'm thinking all the bars. <sighs> you can't see it because my fucking piece of shit phone won't focus. Anyway, most of the windows in this neighborhood seem to have bars on the windows. 
Can I get it? Oh, there we go. There we go. That's what I'm trying to get on the film here. Yeah, lots of bars on the windows. And I'm thinking that tells you all you need to know about this neighborhood. Oh, this seems pretty peaceful right now. In fact, the most disturbing thing on the street right now is me. So my neighbor on that side, that guy fucking hated me. Uh, I'm going to go on a limb and say he's probably dead. <laughs> he's probably dead by now. He doesn't look at all the same as when I lived here. And uh, yeah, he's probably dead. Yeah, I can't imagine him playing basketball, right? There's a basketball. Can you see it? Basketball hoop right there. Oh, you can't see it. It's too dark. Um, he does have a really good reason to hate me. <laughs> I got his ass arrested once. One time, apparently, I pissed him off so much, he came and threw a brick through my window, my front window. That was the one time the cops sided with me. Like, if, if you hate your neighbor... Probably what you shouldn't do is throw a brick through their window. Like, like once you do that, um, the cops are siding with the guy that didn't throw the brick through the window. Um, although one time, he had this really nice Cadillac. Like an early 80s Cadillac Prone, like a big fucking Cadillac. And he had it parked directly across the street from my place. Usually he parked it in his driveway, but for whatever reason it was parked. And then I came out, and I was, I was a cab driver, and I came out of my place... Um, I need to like somebody called for a cab, and I was at home, and I came out, and I wanted to, wanted to, I needed to go pick up my purse, and I backed out of my driveway over there, and just, I just wasn't paying attention. It was one of those moments, and I just literally backed into the side of his fucking car. And, Fucked up his car. I did. That was on me. And I had insurance for that. My God, I was paying... Uh, I, at that point, I had two taxis, and I was paying about $800 a month for commercial insurance for both vehicles. And, uh, yeah, my, my insurance took care of that. I was shocked I didn't lose my insurance over that. And initially, I kind of wanted to just pay him under the table to fix his car and just, like, not have it be a problem with my insurance company, but... Yeah, he wasn't hearing it. And I'm trying to remember if that was before or after I, uh, I got him arrested for throwing a brick through my window. Um, I don't remember that guy's name. And, and he was old then, so I'm sure he's fucking dead now. But, yeah, when I think back over neighbors that I've had over the years, and I mean, I'm, I'm in my 50s, so I've been around for a while, right? I look back over neighbors I've had over the years and once I've had bad relationships. Like, that guy tops the list. <laughs> and, and, and now he's a guy in his 50s. Like, I feel bad. It must have sucked for him having me as a neighbor. <laughs> you know? It's like, look at, oh shit, that guy... That, that guy, that guy, like, him and his mom own that house. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about him. <laughs> you know, it's like he can't report me to my landlord, right? I mean, obviously my mom doesn't want me out of that house because, like, generally speaking, I'm, I'm the one, I'm the one paying for it. <laughs> At least I tried so hard. And for whatever money you lost on a mom, I'm sorry. I tried. Holy shit, I tried so hard. I tried so hard and failed so miserably. God, I had all these ideas. All these really brilliant fucking ideas of how Express Cab was going to revolutionize the taxi industry. <laughs> and and the, the, the messed up thing is that what I was trying to do then and we're talking like early 1990s, was essentially what became massively successful with Uber and Lyft years later, but different. And the thing that was different is that I set my dispatching up through this very cutting edge computerized phone network that instead of your call going to a dispatch office, mind you, apps for another thing. Nowadays, nobody wants to talk. Nobody wants to talk to nobody. They just want to open up an app and tap, 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 and have their car showed up. Back then, people talked on the phones. 
Phones didn't have screens. That wasn't a thing. The year was 1993. And what I was trying... Oh, Jesus, I forgot where I was parked. Just hit the button. <laughs> that car over there flashed. What I was trying to do... What I was trying to do was create a taxi system where anybody with a car that met the description and you know the car that was suitable for passengers and had the correct insurance could get on with me and already had a cell phone could get on with me and then the system would would allow them to log in to us to, to log in Logging in is a thing now. It wasn't a thing then. It's a thing other than with me. It's a thing now. Where they could log in. And when they logged in, basically stay where they're at. And then the system would route customer calls directly to them. If they were the next available cab in that area to drive them. That way, there would be no communication errors. Um, and I'm probably dating myself, whatever. I'm old. I'm 52. I'm old. Um, when I was a kid, there was a game that was popular called Telephone. Telephone was a game that was played with large groups, usually at school. What the fuck is that? Well, look at that. Somebody had a little shaved ice business. It's like a food truck with a shaved ice truck. That's awesome. Oh, why won't my shit focus on it? I hate this phone. It's, it's blurry. Oh, there we go. Shaved ice. Someone has a shaved ice trailer. It's a little business for them. That's awesome. All right. Um, I'm at the weird intersection of 33rd and Larkspur, heading uh, eastbound to Larkspur. Um, anyway, um, so as somebody who had been a cab driver for a large cab company, namely Yellow Cab at that point, it occurred to me that the biggest problem with taxi with taxi services was that people would call for a cab and they would talk to a phone monkey I'm sorry the, the uh, customer service representative who would take their information down and even if they gave the information that the driver needed to know most of it got lost because that phone monkey would take down the minimal amount of information and it would go on a, either a handwritten ticket or into a computer and it would get sent to the dispatcher. The dispatcher would dispatch it in the most minimalist way possible to the cab driver. So what in information that the, that the passenger had given to help the driver find their home and let the, let the driver know what they were doing, where they were going, where they were, blah, blah, blah. All that information got lost by the time it was it was sent to the driver. There were basically two barriers to communication between the passenger and the driver, and that was number one, phone monkey. Number two, um, dispatcher. And sometimes the information that got lost was pretty fucking crucial. It was, uh, oh yeah, I don't dare get on the freeway. It's under construction right now. Um, sometimes it was something as crucial as the apartment number, but that's a fail. Uh, often it was the, uh, it was the building letter or number. It was the gate code. Um, being a cab driver, getting somebody in an apartment can be complicated. That information would get lost. A lot of times, though, the information that was lost was the information going in the other direction because the person who called didn't get to speak to their driver 
the phone monkey that answered the, fo the phone would be giving an estimate of how long it would take for the cab to pick them up. And somebody who's waiting for a ride really knows, needs to know, really needs to know how long it's going to be till the ride is there. And they would say, well, that'll be between 5 and 30 minutes. Really? Between 5 and 30 minutes? Can, can you be a little more specific? Is it 5 or is it 30 minutes? Because that makes a pretty big fucking difference. If it's 5, I'm going to grab my shit and head out the door and look for my driver. If it's 30 minutes, I, I, you know, I need to uh, I'm gonna get comfortable and watch an episode of Gilligan's Island. Like, is it five, between five and 30? No, tell me, is it five or 30? And the thing is, the phone monkey had no clue. Half the time, the dispatcher had no clue. Not that the dispatcher was usually the one answering the call. Um, so when I tried to revolutionize the taxi industry and innovate a different way to dispatch cabs, I tried to set up a system in which in which people who called for cabs would be directly connected to their driver. Cut out all the middleman, cut out all the lost communication, and have that person who's calling actually communicate on the phone with their driver via cell phones. Cell phones were new technology then. That way, the driver can ask whatever questions they feel is relevant and necessary to find where their fare is going to be. And, and can give an honest estimation of how long it's going to take for them to get to them. That's what Express Cab was all about. That's what I was trying to build in my 20s in building my own cab company. I failed, I absolutely fucking lutely failed miserable at it. But I tried, holy God, did I try. And what I, what I built did work for a couple of years for the people that worked for it. I never made a whole lot of money with it. Meanwhile, my mother having issues with me struggling to pay the mortgage on that house, I just walked over to but, but, oh my God, I tried. And I really thought that if I could revolutionize the taxi industry and the transportation industry with a system that directly put, it, that directly put the person calling for transportation on the phone with the person providing the transportation so they could directly communicate and have a, an A to B conversation about whatever they were doing, where they were going, where they were at. I really thought that could revolutionize the transportation industry. Um, yeah, I failed miserably at that. But for my customers, and for my drivers, and for the people that were a part of Express Cab when I had it up and running in the uh, in the in the in the latter half of the early '90s, it was a pretty awesome thing. We gave very very accurate ETAs for arrival. We had this unique personal rapport between the drivers and the passengers and the bartenders that called for people at bars, called for their own passengers back then, people didn't have their own cell phones. And now, like as an old man looking back, I wonder like what what could I have done to make that work? And there's a lot of things I can think of that I could have done to make that work. I can't go back. I can't turn back time, you know. But, my God. That that was that was the concept that could have made me a millionaire. And it instead destroyed me and caused my mom to lose money. But, if I'd have done it right... I really do believe I could have revolutionized the transportation industry. And instead we've got Uber, Uber and Lyft. And how bad did they suck?